Hi, in this video I'm going to tell you how you can make a plan if you want to become a software developer. My name is Shad Sluter and I teach software development at Grand Canyon University, which is in Phoenix, Arizona. Let me share with you some of the things that you should have on your checklist if you're looking for an education and you want to become a professional software developer. First of all, let's ask the question, so where are you going to work with this degree? Who are you going to work with? Everybody essentially needs a software developer. Look at this list. If you were to search for companies that are hiring programmers, software engineers, software developers, any of those titles, you're going to find that technology companies are not the only ones. Okay, so you came to this video not asking about, can I get a job? The answer is yes. The question is, what would I learn or what should I start with? So let's take a look at the plan that you would use if you were enrolled in the degree that I currently teach. So this is something that I speak from from experience. So we essentially have three languages that students learn. You could pick any one of those three if three is too much. But for our degree, this is your plan. So C Sharp is one of our uh, software specialties. So we teach you the basics of C Sharp from the very beginning hello world to developing a full stack application. Along the way you learn object-oriented programming because really you need to become an expert in a language before you can apply it to solutions. So this is not just coding, this is architecture, this is security. We teach you all kinds of plugins and things along the way so when you're done you'll have real-world projects. So what are some of the things that we would support that with? Well, we'll give you a class in HTML and CSS. You'll probably want to learn a lot about databases. So we have a course that covers both SQL databases and we focus in on the NoSQL with MongoDB. Now, another language that students learn in parallel to C Sharp is Java. So if you're not interested in learning multiple languages, then this might be too much for you. But if you were to get the degree at Grand Canyon, you would follow through the same process that you would do as you did in C Sharp. So in Java Basics, you learn how to code. You learn what data structures are. You learn how to do for loops. You learn how to work with arrays and sort things. And then in Intermediate Java, you start learning some more of the object-oriented principles. You'll probably learn unit testing. And then when you get to web development, you'll use Spring Boot and you'll be able to do a fully architected solution for a professional uh, resume ready project that you would complete at the end of the class. So this is not a computer science degree but we would have some degree uh, elements. So you'll learn a class called uh, data structures and algorithms. So you're going to learn what arrays are and hash maps and sets and sorting algorithms and binary trees and all the theory that prepares you as uh, maybe for those technical interviews where they give you some hard problems to solve using algorithms. In this course, uh, you're also going to have a cloud computing course. So students will be able to host applications on Azure as well as Google Cloud and of course Amazon Web Services and another called Heroku. So in this course, you learn the deployment process of taking a web app and a database that goes with it and pushing it out to scale to millions of users. Another segment of the computer science curriculum that you would get in this degree is with operating systems. So more theory on how memory is managed, how we can have threading, how processors work, um, a little bit of digital logic. And so this is uh, from the computer science world, but it's uh, enough for you to become aware of how your software is compiled and run. So in project management, you kind of learn from the business side of things of how to make a team work, how you can work with the agile programming uh, methodology. What is uh, a scrum? What is a sprint? How do most software developers work in teams, in other words? And so we want to send you out into the world with kind of adult knowledge of how you're expected to behave and work with teams. Now let's go back up to the top and I'm going to put application security in here because if you can build an app and uh, it can be hacked, then of course you haven't really built that app the way you should have. So there's lots of security issues and so we cover what we call the OWASP top 10 of application vulnerabilities. So this will help you avoid things like cross-site scripting or SQL injection attacks or how to manage tokens and sessions in your in your application. 
So security with encryption and all the other features that go with it is something that you become aware with after you've built a few apps. And so even though I showed it as a high priority on the list, it has to come kind of after you've learned to be a developer. Now let me add the other item called front end development. And so some of the words that you might find in this technology world are React or Angular or Vue. These are all JavaScript frameworks that work on the front end. Now just one more thing at the bottom here, we're gonna have mobile application development. So that is an optional part of the degree. So one and two and perhaps even a third to make you an app developer. Now you might ask yourself, wow, how am I gonna accomplish all this? Well, the degree takes four years. So if you're not interested in doing four years of work, you might search for something besides the university that is offering you all this education. Uh, you won't find it at a lot of schools. Most places are trying to push you into computer science or software engineering, which is slightly different. But if you want to become a software developer, you may get a computer science degree, and then once you're on the job, you come back and you learn all these things anyway. So my opinion is you might as well get a degree that fits your resume and fits the jobs that you're applying to. So this is kind of a, a shameless plug for where I work, but if you look at this university, Grand Canyon University, we have a specialized degree called software development. And you can see all of the course numbers and the titles here that I just referred to a minute ago. So let's say you don't want to spend all that time. You want to maybe bring it down to a boot camp experience. After all, boot camps are supposed to get you jobs quickly. What would you learn compared to a university degree if you signed up for a boot camp? So boot camps are typically one semester and they're not all the same, but broadly speaking, you would learn two things in, in a lot of them. So front end development is a popular boot camp theme. So you would learn a class on HTML and CSS and probably a framework in JavaScript like React. And that might be enough to get you started with a job. And then you can rely on your employer to do further training and experience. So my opinion on boot camps is that they're very short and expensive and just enough. So essentially what you're buying when you get a boot camp experience is one semester of a university degree. Now, a very economical and actually quite impressive list of courses that I've noticed is that uh, community colleges typically focus in on practical experience with programming. So a community college typically is two years. You get an associate's degree. However, in Phoenix, where I live, uh, the community colleges here are offering a four-year degree, which competes very well with the school that I teach at. So if you were to uh, narrow down the essentials, what would you learn? You would pick a language like C Sharp or Java maybe, and you would go from beginning to web development. You would learn the basics of databases, some security, and probably some data structures. In my opinion, that would be a good degree and you would be well prepared to work in many places. Additionally, the cost is very effective at local community colleges. So check the school that's close by to you it's supported through tax dollars and you might as well take advantage of it. Now, all of these courses can be taught online. So you don't have to go pay tuition to where I teach or to your community college. You can go find everything that I just showed you on YouTube. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you go to studycoding.org where I post a lot of my courses, you could get the same material. However, you're not gonna get help from me like you would if you were in my classroom and you wouldn't be able to learn from your coworkers. So for the next video, I'm going to show you maybe some advice on how to choose a degree looking at the course list at the university that you're interested in. So if this is interesting to you and you want to become a software developer, you can either enroll in one of the schools that we'll talk about, or you can look at my tutorials that are available online at studycoding.org. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and come back because this could be a great help to you in your career.